wait to be in the car again. When is it rocking up? We're headed to Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to be exact, to the Fox Chase Cancer Center. To see if maybe we can't get some more light or knowledge or wisdom on this crap that he has. <laughs> My stomach feels a little bit better today, but I haven't eaten yet, so we'll see what happens when I eat. Um, yeah, that's about the extent of it. We'll make this an exciting thing to do. Well, I mean, it's a two and a half hour drive to Pennsylvania and a two and a half hour drive back. I'm sure we'll find something along the way that would be exciting to film. Right now, this just isn't it. <laughs> so. But I had to start to vlog at least. Yep. Yep. So we'll see along the way. We'll see what happens today. Anxiety issues. So I'm going 70, by the way. Yeah, he's going I'm 70. The, I'm the slowest person on this highway, other than the dump truck in front of me. Um, and we're on. What are we on? We're on one. Yeah. We're on one, and we're headed to Philly. And like, I can't even make this up. Like, my heart is still freaking pounding. A van came up, the speeding on the right hand side of us on the shoulder past us, cut in front of us, and then cut in front of the damn tractor trailer in the other lane. Like, I can't even make it up. Like, I, we said we really need to start recording our trips because that was insane. Like, I had, that's the first time I've ever witnessed anything like that. Like, literally, he sped up on our rights, cut in front of us, and then cut in front of the tractor trailer in the lane, in the opposite lane, and got in front of him. Like, if he would have misjudged that, because uh, we're only got maybe what two car lengths between us and the track. Yeah. There's only two car lengths between us and the well, dump truck in front of us. More, and there might have been two car lengths between. It just. There. What do you need? I need a dollar. Uh, ten to work? Yeah, I guess. Is that the only dollar I had? And yeah, that was the only one you had. I'm like, oh my god. Like, we need to start, I hope we need to get a dash cam. That whoever was in that van is okay because people don't typically do that kind of stuff unless there's a reason. Whether they personally have something going on or they're in a serious hurry to get somewhere because of an emergency, but people just don't typically do crap like that for no reason and then danger and nobody would do something like that because they're late for work so i really do hope that whoever's in that van is okay and i am seriously blessed and grateful that he didn't kill somebody in the process <laughs> yeah i just i had to record that because i just it was just dumbfounding to me now we got a pair of tolls i just really like this bridge it kind of reminds me of the one in the indian river then you got that bridge over there too. What bridge is that? Like that's not even being used, is it? Airport. I think you can see it. I can't see if you can see it. 
Well, it's back there. Yeah, we're in Philly. And I don't like traffic. Not <laughs> terrible right this second, but it's been interesting for most of the ride. I want to get a view of the skyline. fenced it off, which makes no sense to me. But we'll see what we got going on here. If we got where we need to be here. And then... Looks like we can probably get to the park from over there. If we want to go. So yeah. What building do we need to be in? Do we even know? Uh, I need to uh, pull up to the side and get my instructions. We had to move. The chairs aren't the most comfortable in there. We're still waiting. It's just, it's just hard to sit. But if you look around, it's actually quite pretty out here. And we came from... We came from right back there. There's some little pathways and stuff to walk, but we don't want to go too far, so we shall see. He's got the power bracelet. Go, go, Power Rangers. It's a whole waiting thing. It's crazy. Anywho, so we're finally in the office. We'll see how quickly this goes. We'll see two people. Yeah, we got two people coming in to see us. So, yay! And there's a mirror. So I'm sure it's reflecting me, reflecting back, reflecting. It's, I bet it's really interesting. Ooh. 
It is 3.34. <laughs> we just are now getting back to the car at the cancer center. And that was quite refreshing. <laughs> Um, smart people. Smart, smart people. So, I guess I don't want to say assistant or she was a student. She's a third year med student. Third year med student, graduating in what six months? I think she said. Yeah. Um, I can't remember her name, but she was really good. I mean, she was really thorough. Went over everything. You know, talked to us about you know trials and this and that and explain the levels of the trials which has never been explained to me before yeah explain different levels different medications different things that they could do but was more interested in him and what's been going on so basically she got the whole story within well, her do and, the, and the doctor who basically walked in and introduced himself as tony <laughs> so it, it's not even doctor it's just tony so hey i'm tony he's like hey i'm tony like not doctor i can't pronounce his last name or i could if i could see it on paper but very personable people here including the staff not just the doctors and the nurses but the lady doing the check-in was really nice i mean very professional you know i mean it's a cancer center you know everybody here in this building is affected by cancer in one way or another so you know that's a big deal. Plus, it's part of Temple University. So, anyway, long story short of it is the doctor says that he agrees with the course of treatment right now that he is on the best treatment for his cancer right now. And he deals with a lot of people with Greg's cancer because this is a hub, basically, is what he said. So, everybody comes here, you know, who at least semi-locally or up and down the seaboard and for what it's worth the bb health network has already contacted him to discuss my case so he was already yeah, familiar they, with my case yeah and his oncologist and his doctors already called them to get their advice so like the team that we have in rehoboth are amazing we've always said that you know but this is just another way and reason that they're they're amazing they're not scared to cut, look outside the box and try to find even more help. You know, are there clinical trials? Is he on the best medicine? Is this the best course of action for him? Is this what we should be doing? And the doctor says, absolutely. He is on the best medicine. He is exactly where he should be right now at this point in time. However, he also said that the reason why we came up here today was to get a backup plan. So if, so that, if the chemo for some reason does not work or you know it works and then it comes back or it spreads or something else happens chemo is short term yeah because chemo's, it's very toxic it's very, yeah you can only be on chemo from four, four to six treatments i mean that's just the way it is because it's the toxicity of it so, so it's what do i do after it yeah so if you know he goes through two three round you know if he goes through two rounds and the tumor grows you know, if, oh, uh, okay. okay. So, you know, what happens? And he said, that's why we were up at Fox Chase today is to have a backup plan. That is something happens. He wants us right back up here so that we can start clinical trials or we can start different medicines or different treatments or whatever that case may be. And the one thing that really, you know, sticks out and that was the number one thing is, is he says, when you get your next scan, you call me. I don't want the doctors to call. Well, I mean, he's like, I do want the doctors to call me, but I want you to call me first. <laughs> because he acknowledged that doctors have a lot to do and have a lot of patients and have a lot on their plate. And sometimes things take a little longer than they should. And if he calls, then they get that information sooner so that we can get up here sooner, so that we can get things sooner. Um, you know, they wanted, he, one of the things he said was, our oncologist had asked him, you know, do we, should we refer him to you, you know, if the, there's disease progression? And the doctor goes, that's too late. I want him up here now. 
he said, so I can get to know him, so I can know who he is, so I can talk to him, so I can see what kind of person he is now, before there's disease progression. And that's kind of the way they are in Rehoboth too. Like, they want to do things now because they don't want to wait. You can't wait. You can't. So, I mean, not with cancer. It's not a joke. It's just not. And I, you know, and cancer sucks, guys. Like, it really does suck. And I mean, there are so many people out there that I know right now that are are struggling with this disease in one form or another. If it's a skin cancer, liver cancer, you know, his cancer, you know, breast cancer. There are so many different kinds of cancer and it doesn't matter what kind of cancer it is. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. Cancer in general sucks, no matter what kind it is. Not if it's in your uterus, not if it's in your lungs, not if it's in your brain, Which not if it's in your bones. I am going to have a brain scan. They're going to do a brain scan, but that's a precaution. They're not doing it because they think he has anything going They're on. They're doing it because they think I have a brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just want to validate. Yeah, they want to validate that there's something upstairs, I guess. <clears throat> Yeah, they're not doing it because they think he could possibly have cancer in his brain. They're just doing it as a precautionary measure. So, you know what I mean? Like, I the other day I was sitting and thinking, you know, there's so often I see all these fundraisers and, you know, so many targeted towards breast cancer. And you don't hear about some of these other cancers and you don't hear about, you know, the, the bottom line is this. If it's got the word cancer in it, it sucks. It sucks. It's taking people's lives. It's ruining lives. It's making people miserable. It's, you know, it's causing anxiety. It's causing depression. It's causing, you know, I mean. Here's his last name. Can you pronounce it? Okay. It is, well, no, Olson, <laughs> Les, we'll just call him Tony. <laughs> so. But there's. There's, there's three vowels, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, we can show them. Yeah. Well, I don't care if there's any personal information on um, Well, I'm just looking to see what it is. Just date of birth. Today's date and the doctor's name. But it does say epic on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know if it's backwards or not. If it is, I'm sorry, or if you can see, but... Pause and try to pronounce that name. Yeah. So, screenshot it if you didn't get a quick enough shot, a quick enough glance. But, yeah, so, when, you know, and that's like when we got to the center, you know, it's disheartening to know, this place was huge, guys, it was huge, huge campus, they have two different parking garages, each parking garage is split in half, there's like five or six different buildings, every single one of them dealt with cancer. You know, and as we were going down the hallway to the offices, just this is just the offices. This isn't infusion rooms, this isn't treatment rooms, this isn't hospital hospital, this is just you know, the the treatment rooms or the rooms where they do consultations or whatever. You know, it's a really long hallway and it's split like one, two, three, four, five. And on each sign at each station it tells you the different kinds of cancers that are dealt with in that section. So like his was, he was gastro, gastrointestinal cancers was the, the section that he was in, only because the tumor is down where his adrenal gland and all that stuff is. So that would be considered gastrointestinal, but, and actually that's where his doctor just happens to be. But yeah, so short of making this a forever long video. The content's good. <clears throat> It is good because it's an it's an update and you know it's just it's a reassurance but it was a good visit you know we've acknowledged that you know there is a backup plan if something happens oh traffic in Philly <laughs> you know there's a backup plan you know and, and they even said like there's lodges and stuff around here to stay uh, in I just missed my road because the bus oh Okay, so we'll just go this way. But, you know, it's 
it's a reassurance that he is on the right track, that they do have hope that this will work because this is the best medicine for this type and they have seen good results, you know? So it's still scary as shit, you know? And it still causes anxiety and it still causes, um, you know, some depression and stuff in all parties involved. You know, I mean, of course, more so for this poor guy because he's the one that's got the tumor in his body and the cancer. But, you know, it just, it still freaking sucks because we still don't know. But, you know, there's a good side to it. So, at this point in time, we are headed back to Delaware. Which I'm kind of grateful for because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of Philly. <laughs> I like the hospital. Not a huge fan of Philly. <laughs> and I'm driving it. I just, we, I just don't like cities. I don't like, I don't like the close. If there's anything that makes me feel claustrophobic, it's a city. <laughs> cities make me feel claustrophobic. I guess I would be okay if I was on a bus trip. Like I'm, not, I don't have to drive, so it's a little bit better for me because I don't have to drive. But, but yeah, so that's where we're at. It's almost four o'clock.